Good morning, church. Thank God it's Sunday. So today, we will bless the Lord because today is a day that the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. But before we start, make sure you guys are all prepared, not laying down in your bed, and make sure you have someone with you to praise, uh, to praise the Lord. And also, make sure you guys are dressed up and not with your pajamas or, you know, like any sleeping, um, sleeping dress. But make sure you guys are really prepared because we are worshiping our King. So to start off our Sunday celebration, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. We glorify you, Panginoon. And today, Lord God, we ask, Panginoon, first of all, for your forgiveness. Lord, forgive us, Lord God, from any of our sins, any unrighteousness that we have, Lord God, against you and against our brothers and sisters, Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that you will cleanse us from them, Lord God. And Lord, I am praying that you will prepare our hearts, Panginoon, even our minds, Lord God, to receive your word. And also, Lord, we lift up Pastor Ron, Lord God, as he delivers your message, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, will work in him and through him, Lord God. And whatever words that he will say, Lord God, it will only come from you. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God, for your love and for your grace, Lord God. And Lord, we praise you. We honor your name. In Jesus' name, amen. So church, let's all stand up and let's worship the Lord through music. Lord God, we worship you, dear Father God. Thank you, dear Father God, for this day. This day, Lord God, we celebrate because you are unstoppable. You are almighty, God. You are most powerful, Lord. And you, Lord God, the lion and the lamb. Amen and amen. Roaring in power 
your cross. Thank you, Jesus. Forgiven and free, forever will be my God. And all that you like is so Wonderful Savior. 
Father, Lord, in our families, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God, together, though we may be in different places, Lord God, but we know that you are keeping us together, Lord God, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, who guides us, dear Father, and leads us, Lord God, to know you and know you more. Lord, we are awestruck, Lord. We stand in awe of you. Thank you, dear Father God, for today. We worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now for our offering. According to 2 Corinthians 9, 6-7, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So now church, are you guys ready to give cheerfully to the Lord? Let's all stand up and let's sing praises for our offering. Shake it together and running over again And then it will come back to you When you give, give to the Lord And give, and it will come back to you Good measure, press down Shake it together and running over again And then it will come back to you When you give, give to the Lord given us lord god and lord truly we have to give um back to you lord god cheerfully panginoon because lord all of these lord god we are nothing without you and lord thank you for these blessings for these tithes and offerings lord god and lord i'm praying that we will be able to use it for the furtherance of your kingdom and also lord god as we continue to reach out to the world lord god that you will use these funds lord god and use Lightcast, Panginoon, for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Now let's remain standing for our scripture reading. Our scripture is from Psalm 145, verse 1 through 13. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. And the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Now let's welcome our speaker for this morning, our senior pastor, Pastor Ronald Ramirez. Good morning. Again, uh, we would like to welcome each and every one, those who are, are online. The title of our message today is Ostra. Right? We got the title of the message. Again, this is the second installment right, in our message series entitled, entitled Why So Serious? And it's talking again about you know, um, taking God's glory seriously. So to start this message, I would like to, um, I would like to borrow, yeah, there you go, um, um, an engagement ring. And come on, Kersey. Yeah. So, pakita mo naman sa kanila. Suot mo naman. Hindi naman. All right. All right. So this is an engagement ring that uh, Jake gave um, two years ago. Right? Um, that was during our Christmas party. Right? It was really like a, a great time for, for, for the church. Right? So, if you're going to look at this, you know, um, the, the thing with engagement ring, right, with engagement rings, they are expensive. And I still remember when I bought Michelle one. Right? I got one for Michelle. I still remember that Pastor Ruel, um, you know, um, called me. Right? For those who are not uh, familiar, Pastor Ruel is a... Uh, one of my, uh, uh, you know, is my what you call, partners in time here in 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 in, uh, in um, New York in the ministry. He's the pastor of the Vines Church in New Jersey, and he's also the former director of uh, one of the former directors of uh, Global Baptist Alliance, and which is, which I'm leading now. And um, during the time, you know, so he called me and told me, uh, bro, there's a uh, there's a uh, new um, call store that is opening and they have sales for jewelry and he knew that I was uh, planning to propose to Michelle during that time you know so you know what he did so he told me why don't you come over and then he asked me how much is your budget and this is with all honesty the only amount that I have in in my bank account um, during the time was like around um, less than three hundred dollars so I said and then he told me what what can you buy at two hundred dollars, right? And I was like thinking, oh, that's how much um, um, 
uh, the uh, engagement rings would cost. I was like thinking, you know, because I didn't know the value. And finally, we went to, to the jewelry store, right? And because we were there. And I was looking at the, the, the rings. And they were mad expensive. They were mad expensive. It's out of my budget. And so I was looking there. And then so uh, Pastor Wal said, uh, don't worry because I'm going to buy your Atilani um, a set. And what I'm planning to do, he was, he was saying, what I'm planning to do is because, you know, Coles has opened and they have like all these promos and all. And he said that he's going to get a credit card in order to apply for a credit card. And so we can charge it there. And then I'm just going to pay him. And so I said, oh, there you go. And while looking at the rings, so there's like those mad expensive rings. It's really out of my league. I was looking there. It is actually the, the amount will be amounting to um, my one month salary during the time. Yeah, because um, the church was paying me around $500 during the time. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So I was like, looking there, come on. Why is this man expensive? And you know what? Then I saw all the rings were there. But one ring caught my eye. It is white gold. And then it's princess cut. The shape was, they call it, you know, princess cut. It's like squaring and all. And it's the only one, it's, it really sticks out. But the problem is, it is the most expensive one too. So I was thinking, am I going to buy this? You know, I was like, already computing in my mind, when will I pay Pastor Joel after this? But the good thing is, it was really funny because for every $50 that you buy in Kohl's, you get a $10 coupon. And so he bought first, so I got the coupon. <laughs> right, so that's the secret there. So finally, and eventually it was really funny because, you know, yeah, um, so Pastor Rowell was actually just so kind. So he said, you know, why don't you, you buy other stuff? So we bought this bag. And I still remember. And I was like looking at the bags. And then when we were about to leave, going back to the car, uh, Atilani, Atilani you know, looked at me and then said, where's the ring? I don't know. I left it. Yes, true story. And then so I was like, down in my memory, I was sweating profusely, right? And then I was like, and I was like saying, uh, there goes Pastor Ruel's money. And I was like, you know, what? and then I remembered, I was looking at the bag. So I ran back, and of course, Pastor Ruel cannot run. So <laughs> he walked, and finally we saw it. It's on the top of the shelf. It's a good thing because the bag that I was looking at was on the top of the shelf, Right? And I pulled it down. The ring was inside the bag. Can you imagine that? Now, here's the thing. Right? Um, why am I showing the, the, the ring and not Michelle's ring? Well, um, we had uh, three years ago. Was it three years ago? Right? We were swimming in Coron, Palawan. Right? When we got back to the, to the boat, I saw her ring. The diamond was already gone. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> right. Thank you, Kersey. Right. I'm going to ask for that again later. All right. So, why are diamonds expensive? And here's the thing. Do you know the ones who actually value diamonds? Right. If I didn't have any appreciation of that before because I didn't understand. So here, and I, I don't think that all of you understand also why diamonds are expensive. So here's a, a video that uh, we, we, we got in order that explains, you know, um, how diamonds are made and how they are valued. So let's look, look here. Gold is one of the softest and most malleable of the metals. It can be pressed extremely thin, crafted into shapes, even drawn out to form a fine wire, and all without breaking. Gold isn't affected by water or oxygen, as many metals are, so it doesn't... So it doesn't. There you go. That's actually gold. <laughs> the gold is the one that is formed into the ring. Uh, so, but again, it is the, what makes it valuable, of course, the gold, because a diamond, which is so expensive, it needs to be contained on, um, in something that is also expensive. So we showed you the gold. <laughs> And now we show you the diamonds. <laughs>
Diamonds are cut in different stages. They start off in the rough form, the way they've been dug up pretty much out of the ground. They're cleaned up a little bit. Sometimes what we call a window it is polished into the diamond so that you can look inside the diamond. Then they're analysed so that you can decide how the diamond will be cut to find out the highest quality and the most money that you can get out of the rough. You want either the largest diamond or the highest quality diamonds but smaller. From there, the diamonds go to the cutters. All of the cutting is done by hand. They attach the diamond rough to a dop, which is kind of like a stick that they can hold the diamond with, so they're not holding it with their hands. It gets very, very hot. That gets put very gently onto a rotating wheel that cuts the diamond and also polishes the diamond. The value of a diamond is determined by uh, several things. First of all, the four C's, so we're looking at the colour of the diamond, the clarity, which refers to the minute natural identifiers that are found inside a diamond, little carbon spots or feathers or pinpoints or anything like that. But the larger these are and the more apparent they are, the lower the value of the diamond. The carat weight, which is the actual weight and size of the diamond, and then the cut. So the cut is the most important part other than its size and its weight. The way a diamond is cut is going to create the sparkle and the allure and the beauty of the diamond. Also the market value goes into the price of the diamond, so what rough is available at the time. The other thing that can affect the price is fashion. The popularity of a particular cut or shape. If someone is looking to buy a diamond to wear for an engagement ring or a pendant earring, something like that, they perhaps don't need to bother with the highest of the highest grades. So if you really wanted an investment diamond, I would recommend going at the highest range of colour and clarity and cut. They are always going to be the highest price point. They are going to maintain their price. There's going to be less fluctuation with popularity and fashion. They're always going to be the highest possible benchmark for prices of diamonds. There you go. There are actually, for the value of the diamond, there are like four things that are there. You know, cut, color, clarity, and carat weight. And um, for us who are, you know, the uninitiated, we, I only understood that when I got the ring for Michelle. Right? Because there's like the, the, the certificate in, in, in uh, GIA. And I actually checked it and it panned out. And so I didn't, I didn't um, really spend, you know, um, you know um, wastefully in that and actually um, because it was on sale in a and I, what happened also it was really also like fun and um, the guy who was selling the the, the guy who was a uh, um, what you call that the the salesman right who was mining the the, the jewelry store in, in Coles he actually got engaged recently during the time so I was looking at that and he knew that I liked it but it was expensive and then you know what, what he did he said, um, bro, um, I can relate. Then he said, you know, I'm going to help you get my employee discount. Yes, so much favor. So much favor, yep. And um, during time, because, uh, you know, I was really praying hard that I'll be able like, to get that, you know, and, uh, and uh, praise the Lord God, you know. So I need to, um, good thing, engagement only happens once. <laughs> so, the, 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 again, these four C's, and I will be, I'll be telling you, you know, I barely slept because I wanted to force the outline for today to actually say those four C's. Tell you. And I was like, it was already around 2.30, 3 o'clock. I was still like ringing myself in doing that, but it doesn't really cut out. I actually like uh, um, somehow studied for, for this like for, for almost, uh, you know, um, I mean for, for uh, since last year that I was like trying like to, to get all the stuff that I could put in. But here's the thing. What are the most expensive diamonds? Uh, what is the most expensive diamond in the world? It's called Koh-i-Nur. Yeah, Nur is, uh, we're familiar with that. So, but uh, what is the meaning of that? I don't know, but that's how it's, it's called. But do you know that it's also known as the Mountain of Light and the Diamond of Babur? Mm, right? And why is it the most expensive? And listen, it's way... It, it weighs 105.6 carat weight. <laughs> wow. Right? The most expensive diamond, and it is oval shaped, and it is steep and mystery and legend. The stone is believed to have been mined in India in the 1300s. 
And why is it the most expensive? Listen, right here. The controversy behind this stone lies in the claims that Britain stole the stone from India. Mm. And that it rightfully belongs to India. Rightly or wrongly, Britain, um, Great Britain acquired the stone in 1850 and in 1852. Prince Albert had it cut from 186 right, to 105.6 carat. Just imagine the weight that they actually wasted. And actually, apparently, the, the, the price of the stone is not only, that doesn't only um, depend on the, the finished one, but also where it was cut from, right? That's what makes it also expensive, right? So the colorless oval cut diamond is also known as, again, mountain of light. And what's the price? Unknown. It's invaluable, priceless. And to, to give you an idea of how much this is, so I took the, what's the second most expensive diamond in the world. So I saw it. It is the Cullinan, C-U-L-L-I-N-A-N. -L -L yeah, yeah, parang cauliflower. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's different spelling, all right? The Cullinan is the largest rough diamond of gem quality ever found. Right? And do you know how much it weighs? 3,106 carat weight. Woo! Right? Just imagine that's your, that's your, that's your um, engagement ring. <laughs> you want to show it to me? <laughs> so, it's this, the name came from because it's discovered in Cullinan, South Africa in 1905. It was then gifted to the King Edward VII the rough diamond, also known as the Star of Africa. Now, it was cut into nine main stones, of which Cullinan 1 is 530.2 carat. Still, carat, can you imagine? Right? But here's the thing. Do you know how much this is? Two billion dollars. Right? It's not only one, but like the nine stones. Can you imagine? Two billion and just imagine, this is not the most expensive one. But here's the thing. Do you know, the ones who actually understand this, the ones who actually appreciate why that we, we who are not really familiar with this, we don't really appreciate that, but the ones who actually un, appreciate these diamonds are the ones who understand this. They have the eye. They understand the value. You give this to someone on the street, they will not, they're not going to... They're not going to appreciate that, right? Now, the title of the message today is Awestruck. It came from, again, my favorite hymn, um, How Great Thou Art, mm. right? It says there, in awestruck wonder. No, a person who knows, if somebody shows you one of the nine stones of the colony and it was shown to you, you will let, you're just going like to go, oh, wow, diamond, Right? But a person who knows the value, they would even not dare to touch it. Oh, come on. It's so expensive. Right? Come on. Come on, hold it, hold it. And no, no, it's just too expensive. Are you, are you following me? When it comes to the glory of God, it's the same. We don't understand that. We don't give the glory to the Lord God because we don't understand it. Right? Now, the four C's for diamonds... Clarity, the meaning of clarity is that there are no blemishes because diamonds inside, they will have actually like this gray or, or you know, or black um, small spots. It, it, you don't see it with your naked eye. But remember the way um, the, you, you saw them when they were cutting the diamonds? They were actually looking into the mas um, microscope, through the magnifying glass. Those are powerful magnifying glasses, right? They are looking there because it's inside. So the clarity, it needs to be clean, right? So it needs to be uh, flawless, right? And now the, 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 the cut is not the shape, right? The, we have the oval shape, we have the princess, but they called cuts. But that's not the cuts that is talking about that. Later, I'm going to show you that. What is the cut about? And now we have the carrot weight. We have the carrot weight, how big it is. And um, what's the other C? Collar. Right? And in actually, the, the um, colorless is more expensive. But when I look at the, the most expensive diamonds that are available for sale right now, 
you know, they actually have like, you know, pink hues. There's like one that is like blue, right? But again, all this contribute to that. But here's another thing that we don't understand. You know, in Tagalog, we call, we call diamonds, right? Diamante or brillante, right? That word brillante, that's talking about brilliance. That's actually what the word cut. That's the meaning of that. There are two terms that is talking about cuts, and that is brilliance and fire, right? Brilliance and fire. In order for us to understand this more, right? So brilliance is actually that when, when the, you know how, how the diamond actually reflects, right? When it goes through the light. The, when, when they're like, you know, in, in movies that you see a, a, a diamond and then they actually like uh, exaggerate that, that it goes through your eyes and then, ding! Then you saw that, it's like, you know, a sparkle or whatever, right? So that actually is because it emits that white light. So that's why the more the, 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 the cuts are really so important because they make sure that it does that. That's brilliance. The other one is fire. So this is white light. This somehow it's like reflecting in your eyes and you take notice of the diamond because of the many cuts it has. Right? But here's another. And do you know, they actually, um, they actually do math in cutting. That's amazing. I was like, and just imagine the small diamonds, right? How they do that. But here's another thing. Another one is fire. That when it passes through, there are some angles that, that actually gives you the use or the colors that going through the prism. Remember white light, right? White light, when, when it's at the proper angle, it emits different colors. That's fire. In brilliance and fire. So um, uh, let's show it, Jake, the, the video for that. And so there's music. So the one on the left is brilliance. The one on the right is fire. Both reflects the glory of God. Right? Now, I had a hard time really, right, on how, because this is talking about why we need to glorify God. And how we glorify the Lord God, there's no way that I can really like, you know, the only way is that, you know, it, it needs, it, we need the Lord God to actually show it to us. The only way that I can, I can have these words, right, conveying, being conveyed through my mouth, but unless the Holy Spirit really exposes it to us, unless the one who, who actually was that glory, allows us, it reveals it to us, we will never really fully understand this. So maybe at this juncture, may I ask you to go to the Lord personally and ask the Lord God, Lord, reveal to us your glory. Reveal to us your glory. And I pray at the end of the message that we are all going to be awestruck. Awestruck. There you go. So let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to give you a minute or two and then I'll lead you in prayer. Oh, Lord, our God, we come to you. Again, Lord, open the eyes, Lord God, of our hearts. Lord, to, to how great you are, to how holy you are. And I pray again, Lord God, that today we are going to be really, Lord God, in awestruck wonder of your wonder, your beauty, your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whew. All right, so the word for glory in the Hebrew is kabod. Mm. K-A-B-O-D. Right? It's pronounced as kabod. There you go, right? Kabod. Yeah? Well, is it familiar to us? 
we, it's familiar to us Filipinos because we're familiar with Ikabod. You know, there's a comic strip before, and uh, for those, you know, I, I actually aged myself, right? Um, in the 1980s, 1990s, it became popular, Ikabod Bubwik, as a, uh, as a uh, commentary. It's a comics, as a commentary against the government uh, during the time. So Ikabod, um, later I'm going to explain that, but let's go to the word Kabod. What's the meaning of the word kabod? Kabod, again, is translated glory, glorious, all right? So, um, kabodal, like, uh, like uh, all the other ones that are um, 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 derived from it, right? So, kabod can be translated as this, weight or heaviness. It's heaviness in, in, in a positive sense. That means that it carries weight for you, right? So, it's not something that you take lightly, Remember? The title, uh, last week we talked about that. Why so serious? We cannot take God's glory lightly. So that's the meaning of that. Another one, strength, power, ability. So this is one part of how Kabod is translated. The second one, the second one talks about, you know, when we talk about glory, and here it is, it says honor, glory, magnificence, dignity, splendor. So the other one is talking about strength and power, right? Um, uh, you know, it's like, uh, again, the uh, again, strength, power, how, how great it is. And the other one is talking how beautiful it is. It's talking about how wonderful it is. So these are two things when you talk about God's glory. God's glory, it's talking about power, it's talking about splendor. Now, right, um, in order for, look at the way, in, in uh, the, the scripture reading for today, right? These words that were used, I will extol you. The meaning of that is exalt. I will bless you. I will praise you, right? And then these are the words that were used, right? In verse 5, it says, I will meditate. Look at the words that were used here. On the glorious splendor of your majesty. And then it says, and on your wondrous works. So we glorify God. These are the things that we glorify God, that we give glory to the Lord God. We glorify Him. We glorify Him. We glorify His name. We glorify His nature. We glorify His works. Right? Are you following this? You are going to see, um, and there's even a song, glory to His name. That's why the Lord God is saying, this is like this diamond. This is really like this precious diamond, this precious stone. You don't handle it carelessly. Right? You are not going to handle the covenant, even though like the smallest one. You're not going to handle it carelessly. Because you know it's expensive. That's the way the glory of the Lord is. That's why the Lord God said, he, remember? He said that, that um, you know, do not take the name of the Lord in vain because the name of the lord is powerful mm. the name of the lord jesus christ demons right demons if there's any if there's like something that is really powerful on this earth that would be them but they tremble at the name of the lord jesus christ and but we humans because we don't understand we use it crassly i was like pointing that out in the cell group last night that i led and, and just imagine, is there any other name that is being used in movies that is twinned with curses? Have you ever heard? Right in movies? Have you ever heard Buddha, Muhammad, Allah? It's always God or Jesus Christ. Right? This is what the demons are doing. They cannot do it. They make you and me do it. But isn't it a wonder? Why isn't it? Have you ever held an effing Buddha? Are you getting this? Why is it always Jesus or why is it always God? Because here it is, right? The whole creation declares God's glory. God, everything proclaims God's glory. Proclaim. But Satan is counterclaiming it. And he steals, he kills, and destroys. Right? Takes something that is valuable. And then he slanders the glory of the Lord God. He cannot do it. So what he does, he, is, he tempts you. 
to do that. Why? He wanted it for himself. He never got it. Right? So in order for us to understand it more, there's another passage. So you have to really bear with me. Long passages that we have today. And actually, I'm going to make you jump from one verse to another. Right? Later. In Isaiah chapter 6, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah chapter 6, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of His robe filled the temple. Does that mean the glory of the Lord God fills the temple? When we talk about the train, right? The train of His robe. Does it mean, remember when the Lord Jesus Christ, somebody actually touched the hem of His garment? That's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's the picture of actually, uh, actually like taking or touching the person, right? And here, the whole, the robe filled the temple. His glory filled the temple. This is talking about heaven. And above it stood seraphim. Seraphim, uh, these are seraphs. M is a plural, right? That, that Im implies more than three. I mean more than three, more than two, right? It's triple. So seraphim, these are angels, and look at how it's described. These angels surround the throne of God. And each one had six wings. Two, he covered his face. And another one, he covered his feet. And with the other two, he flies. Right? And look, and one cried to another. And they are not just saying this, saying this, you know, emptily. They are declaring it to one another. Listen. They are... Saying it to one another. Are you getting this? So then he said, and one cried to another and said, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. They could have just said, holy. And it's done. We get the message. Why is it three times? Because three means completion. Right? And, and here, and it's also an implication, right? It's also an implication of the Trinity. Right? Holy, holy, Holy Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. Right? Of course, this is not, this is heaven. So this is talking about the heaven is filled with God's glory. The whole earth is filled with God's glory. And look, and what happens when they declare this. And every time they say this, and the posts of the door were shaken. It causes heaven quake. Right? And I still remember Francis Chan went to uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle. And Brooklyn Tabernacle has a part that they were actually in the undercroft, like, like a basement. And while they were praying, Francis Chan felt shaking. The place was shaking. And he opened his eyes. And you saw the, uh, the pastors who were, the other pastors who were not from there, or the first time that they were there, right, were also, their eyes were also open. Because they were like, it was shaking. But all the other pastors who were from Brooklyn Tabernacle, they were all, they're all, their eyes were closed. And they were like just praying, you know. And, and, and apparently it's not really, he was like saying, wow, this is wonderful. They're just praying and the whole room is shaking. Apparently on top of that is a subway. So a train passed. Right? But that's amazing, right? If you, if, if, you, if you experience that. But here's the thing. Even heaven cannot take the glory of God. Heaven does not take the glory of God lightly. It shakes. It shakes. And then by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. Remember? We were talking about brilliance. We're talking about fire. Right? And now in verse 5, so I said, and look at the reaction of Isaiah. Would you be, if you were Isaiah, would you be, wow, right? You're expecting that you are there. And wouldn't you be like, oh, wow, this is great. Right? No. Look at the reaction of Isaiah. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The Bible says, and God said, nobody can see His glory. Why? Because you're going to die. You're going to die. That's what the Bible says. 
And that's why God had not seen, that's why nobody had seen the glory of God. This was a vision, and Isaiah actually said here, look at what he said, I am undone. Why? Because when you see God, when you finally meet Him, you understand that you are unworthy. It's too much. It's overwhelming. Right? This are this same thing had been the reaction of people in the scriptures who had gone face to face with God. Moses. Gideon. Right? I say they what happened? They all fell down to their faces and said, I am undone. I'm going to die. Because Lord, I am not worthy of who you are. So you see God's greatness and you feel small. But remember what the Lord God said, the humble, I will lift them up. And that's why, what is the best position in worship? Is it raising your hands? Is it your eyes closed? Crying? Right? Some of you actually online. Some of you, there are times that those who are in Zoom, a lot of pastors actually, this is a common story. A lot of you are actually crying. They, they thought, some pastors thought that you were crying because you got touched by the message. Apparently because while worshiping, you are preparing lunch. You are slicing onions. Right? That's, the Lord God is not worthy of that. Are you following this? Where you are right now is an altar. Right? Where you are right now, the presence of the Lord is there. So I pray because, um, you know, with this, uh, uh, what, 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 do we, what do we call this? With the Omicron, we don't know what's going to happen next one. We just heard that there's another strain that came out, Ihu. Right? Ihu. Um, Ihu. We got a good work in you. Right? So, and there's another variant now, Florona. Mama, mama, Florona. And just this morning, just this morning, it popped out in, a, in my newsfeed, right? There's a variant that is the combination of Delta and Omicron. Mm. But here's the thing. If you got the Omicron, you are safe from it. And they say that Omicron actually is like a, you better, if, if, if uh, it's, all, it's all right to get the Omicron because the symptoms are not really that bad. Right? So, and here's the, all these things that we are hearing. We don't know what's going to happen. So we are going to be, we might be taking like the online worship service, right, for quite a while. The hybrid, the way we are doing these things. But I tell you, God is not worth it that you are in your pajamas and worshiping Him. You didn't even brush your teeth because it's so comfortable. And you're worshiping the Lord God as if you're watching Netflix. I know, I know, I look like a movie star. Right? I know our coaches and our deacons look like movie stars, but this is not about us. This is about the glory of God. So I tell you, don't dare because it's not God's glory is fixed. The, the price of the diamond is fixed. Right? There's already intrinsic value to that. But the, have you seen that God allowing you to be before Him is a great privilege? It's a great privilege. And look, even Peter, when he realized, remember when the Lord Jesus Christ called him? And then the Lord Jesus Christ, he was debating the Lord Jesus Christ during the time. And I could actually relate with Peter. I'd be telling Lord, and that's my thing, Lord. But then she said, but when he drew the fish... And their boat almost sank. What did Peter do after a while? Afterward, he knelt down on the boat and told the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, go away from me. At first, he was telling, calling him rabbi. But at that moment, he said, Lord, are you getting this? When you face God, when you finally understood that you are not worthy, even we, we are singing here, the whole heaven shakes because the angels were declaring Him and proclaiming Him. How will we measure up 
with all the angels in the whole creation singing to the Lord God. Even the best singer in the house. Who's the best singer in this house? Ibes. <laughs> Alright? Even with the best singers, the best choir that we could have, we are no match to the whole creation singing to the Lord God. But imagine the Lord God accepts your praise and your worship. And then we dare. And then we dare during worship in our houses that we don't even prepare. Your hair is like Edward Swiss or hands. And look at what happened in verse 6. Here's how Isaiah experienced God's glory. Look. In verse 6, then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Praise the Lord God because it's not only this that it's not already the coal that has touched us. It is the blood of the only begotten Son of God. Right. Then the next thing is in verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. When you're finally touched or you have touched God's glory, the next thing that you would want is to share that to others. To share that to others. That's the proof that you actually experience God's glory. You don't keep it to yourself. It's hard to keep it to yourself. You're going to actually go out and declare, I found the pearl of great price. And just imagine this. If you had discovered the cure for COVID, aren't you going to go out there and tell them, take this pill? Right? Aren't you going to proclaim it the same way? When you understand the glory of God, here is something that is precious and we give it away. We give it away. That's what happened here. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, in John chapter 1 verse 14, look at what it says. And of course, verse 1 we know, in the, word, in the beginning was the word. That actually like connotes, again, Genesis chapter 1, which is talking about we're just talking about the glory of God. Right? We're just talking about the creation. And look at what it says. And in, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now in John 1 14, look at what it says. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Listen. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Glory! Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Right? And I wonder that when we sing, I grew up with this song, the hymn, holy, holy, holy. And when, there, there are times that when we sing it, it's like this, holy, holy, holy. There's no sense of singing it, that understanding it. Actually, when this was declared again, the whole heaven shakes. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Eventually, at the end of all this, Again, everyone is going to actually bow down to his glory. And look in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Therefore God had also highly exalted him, exalt, worship, glorify, and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Those in heaven and those on earth 
And those under the earth, again, if you haven't heard that, um, our Christmas message, I talked about that, that there will be praise and worship in hell. If you don't want to declare the Lord Jesus Christ here, right, you are going to declare Him eventually. But if you declare Jesus Christ here, accepted Him as your Lord and your Savior, you're going to declare Him in heaven and in earth. Mm, right? But for those who don't want to declare Jesus now, you are going to declare Jesus eventually. Yes, you! And then it says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And there are times that we, we always pause there. But look at the next one. To the glory of God the Father. It's about glory. And now we're taking glorifying God lightly. Why so serious? You need to be serious in glorifying God. You need to be serious with your Christian life. Why? Because this is so expensive. There's nothing like it. And then you take it lightly. And how dare we, right? How dare we? Let me borrow again. Curse his ring. Jake, come here a little bit. Curse it ito ka. That's fine. Right? Come on, Jake. This recorded anyway. No internet. Right? Use the hotspot. Let's try to do a hotspot for it. All right, reenact re how you propose to, to, to her to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ay, hindi kita, hindi kita, Joe Boy. Yeah. One more time, hindi ka nakita sa camera. <laughs> One more time, there you go. Ayan, yeah. <laughs> All right, then, then, she, then she got it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, kiss the man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Kersi. Dito ka muna. Yeah. When she finally got it, what did Kersi do? Did she keep it in her pockets? Are, 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 are you getting this? Did she, got the, did she get the box and put it inside the box? And then kept it somewhere safe. Because if she walks the street of New York, this can be stolen. Are you getting this? You know, why? She wore it. There you go. Yeah, come on, show, show it. And then, this is how she posts with her, on her pictures. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> why? Yeah, when, when, when she actually talks to friends, how do you do it? Right? When you're talking with friends, yeah? Right? And then when... when you know, <laughs> What's the point? Are you getting this? What's the point? The point for this is because um, there's, there's, the, there's the clamp in the, in the room. All right. um, and the, what's the point there? The value of the ring, it, there's already intrinsic value in the ring. Are you getting this? This is actually expensive. But... There's a change because it's not just about the ring anymore. It is because of what was given. Are you getting this? Right? So cursey during that time, right? A month after, she cannot get over it. So she flaunts the ring. But it's not just about the ring. It's about the engagement. Hmm. All right? Thank you, cursey. There you go. Na uturing kita. Right? What's the point? Here it is. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not His glory, the glory of God the Father has been revealed to us. When the apostles asked Jesus Christ, He asked Him, they asked Him, show us the Father. Show us the Father. And what 
did they what the, how did the Lord Jesus Christ answer that? You know, if you had seen me, you had seen the Father and listen. And how else did he talk about that? The Lord Jesus Christ in that context, that's where he said. That's where he said. He said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now the value of that ring, right? It's not anymore just the intrinsic value of it. But it is because of what it symbolizes and who it came from. It's not now, it's not just, you know, again, it's how valuable it is. It becomes valuable because of who and what. Mm. There you go. The glory of the Lord God is being shared to you and to me. And actually the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, when he who is our life appears, we shall appear with him in glory. Do you know that the, in the Old Testament, the Father will always say this, God will always say this, I will never share my glory with another. Because that's how valuable it is. But now He's sharing it with you and me. Why? It is because we now have a relationship with Him. So how do we have a relationship with God? It is by, again, when you understand that, when you finally meet God, you repent. You repent. You, it makes you understand that you are not worthy. But God is faithful. But God is powerful. But God is loving. God is gracious. God is merciful. And just imagine that you was at enmity, was in conflict with God. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. And just imagine now, Jesus Christ is telling you, and what if you see the one of the colonists, because the coinward, Right now, they don't even know where it is. But one of the colonists, you are able like to see it. And then, one of the curators of the colonists actually will go to you. Yes, Michelle, you can touch it. Are you following this? Yes, Ronald, you can touch it. I can. I can. And wouldn't you be excited to be able to touch it? Oh, I might drop it. Don't worry, I am holding it for you. That is Christ. That is Christ. The reason why we can actually just touch God's glory because Christ is in you and you are in Christ. Now, now that you are already a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, touched by the glory of God and was able to touch God's glory, here it is. So here's now the how. I know with the why, I don't really have, I was really having a hard time pointing it out. So that's the way that I can only explain it is to picture that. How Isaiah did it in the same way with us. Now, how? Right? So let me start with the Westminster Confession of Faith, the shorter catechism. The first catechism is this. What is the chief end of man? The answer is this. Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. What's the use of diamond if you're just looking at it? Diba? Are you getting this? Even the engagement ring of, of, um, of, of Kersey, she will not be able to really value it even though it's valuable if she's not wearing it. There's no value to it. Are you, are you getting this? So the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. And listen, so there are, and this like, you know, this is what, you know, I stretch my, my brain last night and I couldn't really like push it. You know, the, so instead of four C's, I have four S's. Right. So instead of four C's, I have four S's. So number one, right? So how, how do we glorify God? Now, you will never be able to glorify God if you are not a real Christian. If you have not repented of your sins, and if you had not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Sincerely, huh? Because I know, um, like us, a lot of people who had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Pero na, a lot of them didn't receive the Lord Jesus Christ for the sake of seeing His glory. A lot of, a lot of those who receive the Lord Jesus Christ is because you know, their boyfriend or their girlfriend comes to light cast. So it's not Jesus Christ that they receive because when they broke up, they're nowhere to be found. Mm. So it's not them that they receive. They receive, mm -mm. Yeah. You want a clue who this is? Ah, mm. <laughs> you know, so here, the, the first one is to spread. To spread God's glory. Right? So Galatians chapter 1 verse 23, I'm telling you, we're going to have a race among, along, along the, uh, I mean inside the Bible. Race in between the pages. Now, in Galatians 1, 23 and 24. But they were hearing only because they knew that Paul, this is the testimony of Paul. He who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. So Paul, when he became a believer, when he had seen the glory of God, Paul was somebody who is not just anybody. Paul was somebody. You know, he was a lawyer, a Pharisee, a son and ring. If you're going to look there, right? He was like among the top notch among his, his, among his batch. It's like that. But then he was persecuting Christ. He thought he was doing it for God. But finally he met Christ. He left everything. He lost everything. He counted everything as rubbish, as basura, as dung. In Tagalog, ebak. Compared to who Christ is. And look at verse 24. And they glorified God in me. When, when you are spreading the gospel, people are going to glorify God in you. Right? Philippians chapter 2 verse 11. Again, this is the point. That every time, we had read this earlier, to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every time a person comes to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is to the glory of the Father. And you are instrumental to that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Right? Do you hear this? And this part actually has another implication. Because it's not just spreading the gospel, but the proof of the gospel in the lives of the believers, they share. That's the next thing. That's the next thing. Share. Of course, we know about sharing the good news. Right? But there's another part of sharing it in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. This is also, again, the connotation of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. Because what's inside you becomes manifest with what you do. Right? You become generous. In verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13, while through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ. And then it says, and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. So to the glory of God, because your faith now becomes evident, and look, in, in, um, in NIV, I use the King James, but NIV actually renders it, you know, a little bit better. And it says, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. Because if you're really a believer, if you're really a believer, right, it will eventually manifest through you. And look at what it says. And for your generosity in sharing with them, and with everyone else. Do you hear that? Right? Because you are seeing God's glory. You are seeing God's grace. You are not going to be afraid to share what God has given you. You now understand that God has blessed you. Not just to keep the blessing to yourself. God bless you so that you will be able to bless others. And tell you in like us, we have so many testimonies. People started becoming faithful in their tithes and their offering. And when there's a need, we are able to give. And amazingly, do you know that we already have, we have not sent it yet because we're going to go into a program. And I'm already like saying it instead of the announcement right now. Right? We are helping a community in Palawan that was devastated. The pastor who was there, he had to tie his parents to containers when the flood came. And they were floating. 
They tried to go to the higher, the higher place. They weren't able like, to get there. So they were floating for hours. In that community, right now, one of the problems is because there's no source of clean water. So the only way, and people are getting sick. So the water is being rationed to them. So what we are going to do, they need uh, around $3,000 in order to dig a well for the whole community. The community has 29 families. So that's what Lycas is going to do. We are going to share our blessing to them. And right now, we already have $1,000, 1000 plus dollars for that. So the, the following weeks, we are going to campaign. And I believe NYC Lux is also going to, to be involved there. And there's another pastor who actually like lost his house. Right? So we, we are helping the way we can. Why? What's the concern with them? Do I even know the people there? We don't even know them. But the Lord God that blesses us with so much. So we, the, you become, your blessing becomes more blessings because you become a blessing. Hmm. So you share, right? And look at what it says. What it says, again, in, in verse 2 Corinthians 4.15, that may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. The next thing is, now, when you have God's glory, it's not meant for you to keep it. You need to show it. So the next point, shine. Shine. So spread, share, shine. Hmm. It's a good thing that we don't have a lot of people. And I'm just like spreading. <laughs> spreading. <laughs> yeah. So we're observing protocols. It's hard to speak with my mask on. All right. So here, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. Do you hear this? Do you understand the light of the Lord Jesus Christ had shown in your hearts? Hmm. Right? The world will never see Jesus apart from you and me who had already seen. Jesus Christ shines through us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. You are familiar with this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works. Right? Church is not just about attending on Sundays. Church is not just about being able like, to do our ministries. Church is about shining your light. Right? And we don't have our own light. We are reflecting the light of the Son of God. We are sunlight. S O N. Right, so you emit sunlight. We reflect Christ. Now, look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Right, so how do I shine God's light? Let them see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Now in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, do it for the glory of God. There's nothing that is trivial before God. Right? And on the same note, you can actually, if you're not glorifying God, if you are not exalting God, you are insulting God. Right? As simple as that. You can glorify God in the small things. And I like what C.S. Lewis had said in The Weight of Glory. And he says, all our merely natural activities will be accepted. Things that we are thinking that doesn't really mean anything. If they are offered to God, they will be rewarded. The Lord God said, if a cup of water is given to your hands and, the word, and you gave it, to the least of to the least of my children, of, to the least of this, look, look at what the Lord God said. He said that they are surely going to be rewarded. I will never forget that. A cup of water. Diba? So cursey, the cup of coffee that you gave me, it will be forever rewarded. There you go. If you did it from your heart. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Pero mukha ka naman masaya, hindi naman masaya yung kape. Yeah. Oh, pastor. <laughs> right? And look, on the same note, even the humblest and all of them. And then he said, even the noblest will be sinful if they are not for the glory of God. Even if you have yourself burnt. Remember what the Lord God said? But if there's no love, it means nothing. You might be as you might be speak the the, the you might speak the language of angels. You might be singing the better than angels. But the Lord God said, No, no, that, that's already mine. That's not in the scriptures. You might be singing, you know, and, and I, I remember this story that there was a woman who was singing in the chapel. And you know how it is in chapels in the Philippines when it's empty, still like great acoustic. And it's I love to really sing when I was like growing up. And especially, actually the best place to sing is the, uh, we have this uh, like a portion in the stairs, right? And we sing it echoes and we love to actually practice there. And uh, so, so somebody heard the voice of the, and then, so the guy said, Uy, Samia, ang galing mo palang kumanta. Di ba? Samia, para kang, para ako nakarunig ng anghel. Yeah. Samia, gusto ko ngang itape eh. Yeah. That's a, thank you. Itape yung bibig mo. <laughs> right. Anghel na nahulog galing sa langit yan. Alright. So, and even our noblest, they are sinful if it's not done for the glory of God. John 15, 8. By this, listen, by this my Father is glorified. By how? That you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Your life, when it becomes fruitful, when you become productive, the Lord God is telling you, the Father is glorified. So my friends, it's not just sitting around. It's not just listening. It is being fruitful. That's why in like us, we actually position you in order to experience this. And this is our cast. C-A-S-T, remember? Cell group, appointment with God daily, Sunday worship, right? Or Sunday celebration, training. Don't neglect training. By the way, this afternoon, we resume our training, right? For those who are in God's fitness center, we're going to talk about the Baptist distinctives. What does it mean to be Baptist, right? So we're going to go through the B-A-P-T-I-S-T-S. All right, so and that's it, you know. So this is how my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. Right? It didn't say fruit, just bear fruit, bear more fruit, and then bear much fruit. How is your fruitfulness? Hmm. Right? And here's the last thing, and you might be thinking, that this is weird. The last point, the last S is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 3. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice which is your reasonable act of worship. You cannot give anything to the Lord if you had not given yourself first. All your labor, all your offerings, everything that you, you do, if you are not given first. The Lord God is telling us that you, might, you need to be a living sacrifice. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Have you ever found yourself that when you have problems, then you go to the Lord, Lord, why me? I've been serving you, Lord. Do you know, Lord God, since 2019, I'm not working anymore. I'm working as the assistant of Pastor Ronald. And when he became the GPA director, I'm still serving him. And now that we have all this stuff, but Lord, why am I having these problems? Lord God, I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick and tired of tutut. I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, persecution from here and there. Why don't you give it to Yen Yen? Share my burden. 
when we see here, look at 1 Peter 5.10, look at what the Lord God says, but may the God of all grace, actually in other verses there's no may, but the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. Yung suffering mo, that's only for a while. Sandali lang. Right? You know, among the youngsters, wait long. Right? Sandali lang yan. Look, after that you had suffered for a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Are you looking for established, significant, secured life? Don't, don't, don't take God's glory lightly. Take Him seriously. What will you exchange for God's glory? Even if you suffer. Again, Peter said, it's only for a while. But the rewards are for eternity. Even if you suffer the whole life, 70 years that you are suffering. But when you die, remember, eternity is so long. Eternity nga eh. John chapter 11, verse 4. When Jesus heard that He said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Are you listening, church? Lord, I've been serving you. Why did I get COVID? Lord, I've been serving you. Why I now have diabetes? It's not, the, it's not God's fault if you're going to think about it. Kaka-chocolate yan. <laughs> Kasalanan nyo ng music, bilhin ng bilhin chocolate eh. Right? The next one, in Job chapter 1, verse 21. Here it is. What if in glorifying God, what if in pursuing God's purpose for your life, you lose everything? Will you still find God glorious? What will it take you to glorify God? And it's actually also the reverse. What will it take you to stop glorifying God? That's the price of your soul. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What if your marriage breaks down? <laughs> Lord, I came to you. I thought, ah, you see me your marriage, ko, but it's still broke down. Would you still say, blessed be the name of the Lord? When your kids rebel, and I know a lot of pastors' kids had rebelled, Right, at gone wayward. And a, do you know that John, Pipe, uh, John Piper's, yeah, John Piper's son, actually almost every message that he gives, the son actually comes out with a blog contradicting what his father actually would say. He grew up in church. Are you following this? When, when, when troubles come, when things are taken away from you, would you still glorify God if you lose your job? Or if in pursuing God's will, you are taking the risk of losing your job, will you still say, blessed be the name of the Lord? Losing your health, losing your life. Do you know it's weird that in Acts, John and Peter, they were beaten up, and when they came out, they were rejoicing. Right? Bakit? Huh? <laughs> because God gave us opportunity to praise Him because of persecution. That's weird. Because they understood there's nothing better than God's glory. Because it's not just about the glory of God, but it's about who He is. Now, let's bring this home. In conclusion, you know, there's that word, ikabot. Where did we get this? It came from 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 21. Right? 1 Samuel verse 4, 21. Then she named the child ikabot, saying, the glory has departed from Israel. So, kabod, meaning glory, glorious, splendid, majestic, put I, 
the meaning of this is word is the glory. And so he said, so she said, the glory of the Lord has departed. She's not named, but who is this? Later I'm going to explain. Because the ark of God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. Who is this? This is the daughter-in-law of Eli. Who's Eli? Eli the high priest. And what is significant about Eli? Remember Samuel? Samuel was under Eli's tutelage. Right? If you're going to consider that, he's actually a judge. Samuel was a judge. And this is what happened. His two sons were also priests, but they were ungodly. What's the point? You can be religious, but not really repentant, but not really regenerated. Re regenerate means born again. You can be going to church, but you are not really a believer. So what is the proof? The four S, they are the proofs that you understand the glory of God. These guys are so familiar. They, they might even be playing the drums. They might even be, you know, singing, you know, um, backup vocals. They, they might even be mining the, the, the cameras. They're the kids of Eli. I mean, yeah, of Eli. Yeah. The name of the two, the two sons is Hophni and Phineas. Right? Others would pronounce this as Hophni. Right? Para malala nyo, Hophya. Hophya, mani popcorn. And Phineas. And you know what happened here? This is the wife of Phineas. And you know what happened to them? Israel was losing the battle against the Philistines. Listen here. Right? So they said, ah, ah I know what we're going to do. We're going to win if we bring the Ark of the Covenant. So they brought the Ark of the Covenant. But God was not with them anymore. The Ark of the Covenant, the symbols that we have when it comes to glorifying our Lord God, the presence of the Lord God, it's, those are symbols. But God was not there during the time. And what's the point? You remember what the Lord God said? Seek my face. That's talking about God's presence. And when we talk about God's presence, we're talking about God's favor. We are talking about God's blessing. But God's blessing, God's favor is there because God is there. Right? But God will not allow you to mock His glory. So that's why the name of the kid is Ichabod. The Ark of Covenant was there. The Philistines charged them. At first they were scared, but then they charged them. The Israelites lost the battle. And you know what happened? Eli and Phineas were killed. Priests. They were next to become the senior pastor is their father. And you know, so one of those who had escaped went to the, back to the Israelites and told Eli that his sons were dead. Eli fell down backward from his chair, dead. So Israel didn't have a high priest during the time. And you know how important high priests are? Here's the glory of the Lord God. The sins of the nation can only be forgiven because the high priest will actually go into what you call the Holy of Holies. This is like the place, the most holy place, right? The, this is divided into two, uh, the temple or the tabernacle was divided into two parts. The, the holy place and the holy of holies. And the holy of holies, the high priest cannot go there once, he can only go there once a year. In order to offer sacrifice for the sins of his people. And do you know what he does? It, you cannot go there. He needs to have special garments. Because God is holy. And he needs to be clean himself. And even before he does this, he needs to have a ceremonial bath. Before he comes in. That's how glorious the Lord God is. You cannot take this lightly. And then when he comes in, the Lord God could reject the sins, uh, the sacrifice of the people. You know what happens? He dies. Here he was not able to get in. He died. Church, here is the warning for all of us. And here's really like, you know, heavy in my heart. Because there's still a lot of you that I haven't met with. But you had already neglected your spiritual life. Right? I understand your pains. 
But remember what the Lord Jesus Christ told the disciples when everybody started turning away from Jesus Christ, will you also turn away because of your pains? Because you do not fully understand the will of the Lord God? Will you also go away? Somehow, we understand pain, but here's the thing with pain. A lot of us actually respond this way. We go to God. We really go to God and seek God during our pains. But here's another dangerous thing. Your pleasures. A lot of you are already forgetting God. Right? Again, one of the marks that, that you are not doing this and you are not taking God's glory is Likely, you are not prepared for worship today. Again, you got out of bed, watched on your phone, you didn't even brush your teeth. God is not worthy of that. We need to get into the standard. The reason, you know the meaning of sin? Sin is not meeting the standard of God. Romans 3.23. What's Romans 3.23? For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Mga kapatid, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's time for us to take God seriously. Right? If next week Omicron is still on, right, it's still wreaking havoc in, 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 in New York, we're still going to have our worship service online. So let's do a better job. Right? Don't let your kids... Slip, slip in. Make them join the worship service. Be with them. Show them how to worship. When it's time to sing, right? As if you're worshiping on, not only online, but you're on site. Stand up. Sing. When it's time for scripture reading, read with, with those who are reading the scriptures. Give it your best. God is worthy of our best. So wherever you are, that place, your living room becomes becomes an altar. Can you imagine going to the altar wearing shorts? May tatak pa ng Spongebob. Right? Don't do anything else because some of you, while worshiping, you're watching. This is not Netflix. This is worship. Right? Minsan pa nga, minsan mas attentive pa kayo manood ng Netflix eh. Di ba kasi, it's a squid game. Nahiwa mo na yung kamay mo. Kasi nakatingin, you're so attentive. Are you following this? But when it comes to worship, we take it lightly. Mga kapatid, right? I'm not saying this kasi galit ako sa inyo. I don't even know if you're doing this or not. But I am aware that some of you might be doing this. I am not there. But let's give God the glory that He is worth. Why? Because you're missing. You're missing it. Now, the last warning that I have, Malakay Tutu. Bear with me, I know. Right? This is more than an hour already. Right? In 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 21, it says there, Ichabod, the glory of the Lord God has departed. You don't want that in your family, in your next generation. In Malachi 2, 2 look at what the Lord God said. If you will not hear, and you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, said the Lord of hosts, listen. I will send a curse upon you. And I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Do you know the Lord God is who he's talking to? Priests. What's the point? It's not about being religious. God is not about your rituals. God is about your heart. Give glory to the Lord. Again, quoting from C.S. Lewis in The Way to Glory. I know. We want, you know, we want our comforts. We want our convenience. You know, we want our, we want pleasure. And the Lord God is saying to us, you know, in the song that we sing, can I call the band? <laughs> right, we're going to close this message today, not through a prayer, but through worship. We're going to sing again that song. And I pray that right now, you're going to sing it from your heart. From your heart. Because God has so many things that is available for me and for you. The Lord God 
right? Just imagine the diamond. The Lord God is telling you, touch His glory. Again, quoting C.S. Lewis, if we consider the blushing promises of the word and the staggering nature of the words promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Our Heavenly Father, God of all creation, the Lord of Lords, O King. Lord of hosts, most high God. We humble ourselves today. Allow us again, Lord God, to see, to seek, and spread your glory. Lord, we repent because we have taken your glory lightly. Lord, we pray that we are going, Lord, to be a soul group. We're going, Lord, to be a church, a family, and individuals who are serious about you. May we be living sacrifices. May we be people who do not conform to this world, but transform, conform to the image of the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of the Father. Amen. So Lord, I right now, as we sing, may we sing, Lord God, from our hearts and may angels, Lord God, in the whole creation, Lord God, we sing with them to glorify you, to lift you up, to give honor, majesty, dominion, and power to you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I see the works of your head. Spin in a heavenly dance, oh God, and all that you are is so overwhelming. I hear the sound of your voice, all that wants it's a gentle and thundering noise, oh. And all that you are is so overwhelming. I delight myself in you, captivated by your beauty, and I'm overwhelmed.
Jesus, 
throughout all generations, now and forevermore. And Lord God, again we declare all glory, majesty, dominion, and power to be unto you now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen, Amen. God bless you, like us. God bless you. Thank you, church, for worshiping with us today. And I do hope that all of you are blessed by our message. Truly, God's glory is heavy and we cannot take it lightly. So for our announcement is first, prayer dawn. It is from Monday to Friday at 5 in the morning. Next is cell group. So cell group, it happens every single day of the week. And if you don't have any group yet, just let us know or you could contact the person who invited you for this, um, for this Sunday worship. And then Lightcast Sparks. Yeah, and that is our children's ministry here in Lightcast. And they have it today at 12 p.m. And for, oh, is it 12 p.m.? 1, 1 p.m., yeah. So, and also, we have our training this afternoon. Life Class and God's Fitness Center is at 2 p.m. And it is via Zoom. So make sure um, we join our training because training is our happy hour. And lastly, is Destiny 3 every Tuesday via Zoom at 8 p.m. So again, church, thank you again. And we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.